Well, everyone, welcome to Was It Real? Oh, the nice. Heels rewatch, where we rewatch the shows <sighs> and we uh, talk about him and 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 see if it was even real because there was so many times where people have come up to us, right? And and been asking us like, was this show even real? And what what about it was real? What wasn't? Or you know, yeah. There's cut. lots of speculation and people guessing, and you know, there's a lot of blurred lines too. So we're here to clear it all up and tell you what really happened and give you an inside scoop. Give them the dirt, yeah, Frankie. I mean, how this whole thing came about was was you, right? I mean, you put a gun to my head. You said, hey, <laughs> you said, bro, I need some money. Our <laughs> yeah, show's not, say, <laughs> we got canceled, I bro. need a job. <laughs> can we do a podcast? Can, can, can we do a much. podcast? He goes, only if I can have my delicious mamitas. He's so just plastered all over. I was forced this. to put this mamitas thing here. <laughs> uh, and now we're being forced to drink it. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting, my, forced, my arm yeah. is Where's my mamitas? Come on, drink. we're the best. Come on, you know, here you go. Here, I got you. I got you supply Wait, right here, Wait, my favorite one, on. though, is the Paloma. The Paloma? You know, just yeah. Spicy Marg's nice, too. I don't, you spicy Marg's? Go. You're a little There's spicy Marg yourself. I'll slide that over. You're I'll a little spicy Marg when you start... Getting a little drinking. Uh, uh, oh, oh, you, Frank the Tank. <laughs> Am hey, I getting hey, this from Frank the Tank? Come on now, Jesus Christ. Spicy more. Yeah. <laughs> Frank the Tank spicy is telling margarito. me that I get spicy. Anyway, we're supposed to be working here, guys. Um, I know, but we're also going to have some of the OG producers come on and give their side of the story and think they'll probably say things that we don't even remember. Because half the time we we were drinking in clubs, <laughs> so. we were paid. We were paid to drink. <laughs> well, you're still paying me to drink, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Things just haven't changed, I guess. No, you yeah. actually don't have to pay me to drink ma- mamitas. I actually really enjoy it. How I much do you have too. to pay for this, Frankie? <laughs> 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 no, they. I mean, look, they are. No, it's delicious, dude. Honestly, right, I am going to try this one more time. I've only tried we this flavor one. once. We are number one. I mean, we. You know, that's because we do taste good. And we're tequila. Yeah. Who doesn't love so, tequila? So the, the way that we came up uh, about this show, um, I have a friend of mine. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna reveal his name. Okay. Um, his name's Jared. Jared. Ason, who's like the plug. I remember that guy. That was, he was an actor back then. Or, or, or wanna be an actor. actor. He was like trying. Remember, he was trying, he was trying to act. <laughs> he was trying to act. <laughs> he was but, trying to get on the hills. <laughs> he was trying to get on the hills sometimes. Yeah, why didn't you bring him on the hills? Yeah, what a, <laughs> By the way, I liked you could have gone on a nice. date with him too. Oh <laughs> I mean, I was, was the nice. serial dater at one point. Yeah, um, <laughs> maybe he wouldn't wear uh, those big ugly boots. Oh, the combat boots? The combat boots. Oh. He actually wears like… LA. I mean, I still he, wear combat boots. But but it looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> he actually wears like LA gear with like little… Uh, have you seen him? He wears these like LA gears. They, they're bringing him back, and he no, he has I have not on. <laughs> no, he like walks around the clubs. Up. Oh, the light! I actually light like those. Oh, yeah, I wore those to back. EDC. He's bringing them back. That's what I was wearing to EDC. Oh, you had some. I mean, so Jared, you know. so Jared, uh, so Jared called me one day and he goes, "Yo, Frankie, you know what, man? I was thinking about it. Why don't you guys do like this little, like, like a little Hills reunion type of show? I have this uh, podcast thing that I'm like, I'm the plug there, and I'm like, bro, I mean, let's." Why not? Let's do it. Is it? But who's gonna watch if it's just me? He's like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, you have to go get like your best friends and put them in the show. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll do this, but you know, I want equal pay because we we, we have to be equal in this world nowadays. And um, he goes, nah, man. Let let let's try to do it. Who would you want to be on the show? And I and 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 Jared, because we 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 had some good times with him in the past. Uh, we traveled with him and he's immediately said Brody like I want Brody to be on like he would be incredible on this show he 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 has so much to say you just give him one little mamitas and he just can talk for you <laughs> just <laughs> talk your ear off <laughs> he will talk your ear give off give him a shout and, out to Keila. he'll never and, show um, up <laughs> and it was it, it was it, and it was very easy for me to just kind of like grab the phone and call Brody and 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 then me and Brody started talking I was like yo you want to do this and he's like yeah let's do it only if you put mamitas on the show. So I said, fine. And only if it looks like one of your nightclubs. Yeah, only if it looks like a nightclub <laughs> with like my mamitas yeah, ready exactly. to go. Because you know, if you see me at the nightclub, all I have in my hand is like either a mamitas or like a shot of tequila or something like that. So that's how it works. <laughs> or like two bottles of tequila. Yeah, more <laughs> like <laughs> bottles. Let's say, <laughs> who's counting, guys? <laughs> a a shot? A, a shot? shot? We're not counting. That? We're not counting, guys. We're just talking oh about what we have. Okay. Okay, all right. <laughs> 
Just, we're not gonna count about. We're gonna this, count. Is the, this is the this is the rewatch. We're yeah, trying yeah. to clarify things. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna make count sure your girls. Not, we're just gonna okay. know that you you dated. Oh uh, right. Well, but we're not gonna count. Went on a date, you guys. <laughs> Went on a date. Anyway, and, and, what are um, we supposed yeah. to be doing? And then me and Brody really sat down and we were like, "Hey, listen, we gotta we 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 got this going, but we gotta spice it up." And we and and he immediately said, "Like, why don't we, why don't we call Audrina? Like, me and her have great chemistry." You said that. <laughs> no. It literally came out of your mouth. And I said, yeah, I know we you do. had chemistry. That whole, we were talking in bed all night. <laughs> oh nothing happened. Which we will get to the, by the way, we will get oh to the bottom goodness. of this. Yeah, I was <laughs> right? kidnapped. We will get to the oh, bottom of this at some point. <laughs> whenever we get there, we, I, will, I will get every answer that everybody wants to hear. I'm blushing. Because guess what? I don't believe y'all. We will get to that. Get There's to a that, lot to talk about. Yes, and I want to hear this. But not today. Okay. Not today. Okay. Tune in for that one. And uh, yeah, so we thought we thought about you because you're you've always been such an amazing friend to me from day one. And uh, and and to Brody, you've been such an amazing something. Oh. And um, <laughs> and it, it's been, it, I think you were the perfect person to be part of it. And when you agreed to it, it, it just really like since that day, it's been just. Look at our chemistry. It's better than even on the show. Yeah, I was so excited because I love both of you. And we always on the show end up staying up way too late talking after filming. Talking. So it just makes sense. <laughs> Frankie, Frankie, you and like, Jenna Benin, like, come on. Yeah, look at his face. <laughs> I'm just saying. Who is this guy? You when are, I get to, I when I get up, to bed, I'm going to talk. We, like, okay? we talk. We both, you know, when we drink, we it's like to talk, te- Frankie. We don't, you know, we get the deep. The tequila we get deep. keeps <laughs> we, you up all I know you all get deep. <laughs> I don't know how okay. deep, but oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. you know what? Let me okay. just have some of this. Anyway, Frankie, <laughs> you need one of those. Anyway, Frankie, you might need one of, the Brody, might need one of these. Nah, I might. Seriously, this is. I'll stick to the water for now. Mm. Yeah, oh, God. Oh, guys, goodness. don't believe him. That's not water. <clears throat> that is actually spicy, by the way. Mm. It's nice little cayenne. Yeah, it's got you a know, kick. Cayenne, but cayenne, yeah, lime cayenne. Yeah, that's what it is. So, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the show and about um. The actual truth about how, like, the hills and how you guys really um, got, I don't know, I wouldn't say the word casted, but you guys really were, like… Kind of. Well, she was casted. Well, I was, kind of. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't really, like, a thing where you were just there at the right time, at the right moment. It was on… It was one of those… Sees you, right? Yeah, one of those lucky Hollywood stories where you're just at the right time, at the right, right place, at the right time. But I was actually laying out… Or no, yeah, I was really laying out at the pool. And we kind of reenacted that, but with Heidi instead of the producer. But that's how I got discovered, I guess. So you were like laying out by the pool. Well, because you guys were all living in the same apartment no, building, No, well, they right? didn't or... move in yet. So I was already living at the villas in Park La Brea. And Adam God, Zavello, the hottest girls used to live at that place. Do you remember that? Well, I, I Dude, was at the remember Palazzo. that? That was… <sighs> then we was went to the, the Palazzo. No, I was on the rich side. The what? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I remember… Frankie. Oh, oh, yeah. okay, Am I wrong? Okay. It's dude, that, that there was, was the villas and then there was the palazzo. Is, I don't know. Is, I mean, my, my, the, the palazzo had a, had a had a spa. Like, you had a real oh. spa in there. <laughs> no, they, we and Lauren lived there. They did not have a spa. 100% they had a spa. Why didn't we know this? The gym had a, like, like I a know spa. They had a you gym. could do like, like, spa. Um, like there was a, <laughs> no, there, there was a, um, like there was a, a massage therapist too. There was a sauna. There was oh a. My God. I think you're thinking of a room. Korean spa that was down the street. <laughs> Maybe I'm confusing that. When I was getting home, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go over here. No, they really did. And in the, the mornings, because uh, because I used to live with this guy named Ponce, and was, I know Ponce. He was all Gosh, about. He was name. all about yeah, these Ponce. little sauna moments and his little steam rooms. I wish I would have known that living nice. there. Mm-hmm. We never went there once. Love that. But so anyway, so I was <laughs> laying out at the pool. <laughs> And Adam DeVello was there at the villas. Yes, the lower end one, whatever you'd say. (laughs) And Adam was there scouting the place and for Lauren and Heidi because they were moving to LA. And he came up to me and these two girls that I had just moved in with. And they were from Oklahoma. I didn't really know them, but I met him in the elevator. And he liked what my story was. I was already living in LA. I had my nights out. I was working at Coyote Studios and... He, it's like was he loved it to be you know a part of the show because Lauren and Heidi didn't have any LA friends so me and Whitney were their first LA friends so I went in talked to the producers and then within two weeks I started filming I had no idea what I was in for or what reality TV was because I never watched Laguna Beach 
So you never watch it. What? No. Even I watched Laguna Beach. Liar. I know. I was like, everybody watched really Laguna didn't. Beach. I really didn't. I did not. Spencer I mean, and I used to. Well, we you used guys to are just princes of binge Malibu, watch too. that. I know. You know. Hold up. Before you even like were casted and you were like, Adam DeVillo was like, ooh, girl in the bikini. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like. <laughs> okay. like no, I know. Like what? he's just walking around in a pool and like looks at a girl and like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. Hey. so I got a, I'm a producer for this new show, The Hills. It you probably know? helped I had dark hair too because I was the only brunette, like brunette. on the show. And yeah. then I wasn't allowed to change my hair at all. I had to Enough. Like that, Enough with the allowances. It. Come on. No, I wasn't. So then, when did you were like, F you, I'm going to change my hair? I don't know, like fifth season ish. Yeah. Uh, what were you doing before? Like, what were you doing before? Wait, wait, why, why, why were you driving? Like, like well, how did you even so, move to Hollywood in the first place? I mean, so out of high school, I was going to college to be a psychologist and I wanted to go to Pepperdine. And then I had psychologist. to make a psychologist. No one. Yes. See, that's why. So, oh. yeah, I know. You know, see what I'm saying? I need that psychologist. You know, that's you know? the vibe. I'm everybody's That's therapist. The yep, exactly. <laughs> For real. But so I had. How do you understand Frankie? psychologist in how do you the get bed? It? No. Oh goodness. You talk. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah, go it's on, a go great on. mix. Go on. Go we on. Have great You're talk. Okay. That's um. Like, so I had to make a decision. What? It's comfortable. Yeah, okay. it's very comfortable. Oh yeah, yeah. I had to make a decision, so I dropped out of school and I moved to LA and I got a job at Coyote Studios. So I was commuting from Orange County to LA every day. And that's when I met the girls in the elevator, uh, you know, and that's when I just moved Heidi in. Heidi and Lauren. No, these were the, the two girls from that Oklahoma. That you moved, oh, that you wanted to, you lived with. Yeah. Okay. So that's how I was already up here. So I was, already had a job, my nights out. I had a lot of friends that were models and actors up here. And, and I guess Adam just liked my story and. And your look. And my look. And. In the bikini. <laughs> in the bikini. <laughs> I remember I was super tan. So, um, God. Well, 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 I'll save this question for another time because I do want to get to know, like, how did you get an agent? How did you get a manager? How did you, like, what was your pay? Like, you were, like, oh. this girl that they were, like, probably, like, we'll, we'll give you $10 here. Yeah, like, well, do it because you're going to be on TV. Yeah. So, in the beginning, I didn't, I did not get paid for filming. Like, I was working full time and I had to keep leaving work to film. And my boss at Coyote gave me an ultimatum, like, you're going to have to choose. Like, we need someone. This is a real job. And if you're going to keep leaving, we're fine with them filming here. But this, you're like, this is your job. So I had to make a decision. And that's when Adam DeVello was like, well, you love music. You go to shows all the time. What if we get you another job that we kind of have control over? And that's when I started working with a and at Epic Records because mm-hmm. that was so much fun. And then I just, yeah, just all kind of… It all made sense. Yeah. Snowballed. Snowballed. What about you, man? Me? What were you doing? Before? Oh, you don't want to. Oh, know. You don't want to know my what story. What were you doing before? <laughs> what were you doing <laughs> before you met me? Huh? Yeah, what was your life but must have been so boring. Well, I mean, let's see. Wow, I went to college at Boulder. Went to see you. That was very, very exciting time. Uh, didn't stay there for that long. My brother was there. He actually dropped out kind of right before he graduated to do music, and. Uh, and I, I was out there. Um, he left. And when he left, I don't know. I just, I got, I registered late for classes. So all the classes I was taking were just not classes I was interested in. I mean, there were like themes in American culture. I mean, some of the classes now I look back and think, man, I would have been so into that. But all the history. at that time in my life, I wasn't, I just was there partying and not really being productive. And, and I just knew that the classes that I was taking was not what I wanted to do. So what I did, what I did want to do is play the drums. And I, at the time I was playing guitar and I really wanted to pick up the drums. I did. Um, so I moved back home. I've dropped out. You were college. a great drummer, by the way. Thank you, Frankie. So well, we I both just, dropped out. Way better. I, way better we did. Than I, I like dropped out. <laughs> May I say this? Way better than Justin Bobby. Well, thank well you. I do I, remember I, at a party late night, you and Justin had a drum off. Like he was playing, and then yeah. you walked in. And you're like, uh, "Like, get out of here!" And then you started going. I was at there. It. I just didn't want to embarrass both of them. <laughs> well, that's yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. Okay, no, it's uh, so I basically left college because I wasn't doing what I was. I you know just wasn't for me. Came home, really started to focus on the drums. I was 19 at the time, and uh, one of my buddies who was in a band who was a drummer, he dropped out of the band, and they needed a drummer. 
And I joined. And I joined. Wait, what was it? And called? I face joined. Humper. I mean, I joined the. <laughs> I didn't come up with the name. Okay, I joined after. Yes, it was called Face that was Humper. That the band yes, name. Yes, Face Face Humper. We have a picture of that band. Yeah, I'm sure we could find one. Yeah, put it right here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Face Humper was kind of. We were legendary. I mean, look, we opened up. Remember Metal School? I mean, we opened. Yeah. So we had a we had a residency at the Viper Room every Tuesday. Like I had joined the band later, so. Pretty much from 19 till about 21, you know, for a few years, a couple of years, I was in Face Humper, traveling around, making not the, you know, wasn't making a great living off doing it, but I was having fun. I was enjoying myself. I was doing music, which yeah. I loved. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. These past few years have been a whirlwind with so much uncertainty, stress, anxiety, and sometimes loneliness. BetterHelp Online Therapy will help assess your needs and can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. I love how easy it was to find the right therapist for me. All they do is ask you a few questions on their website and then you, they match you with someone quickly. BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not a self-help line. It's professional therapy done securely online and it's available worldwide. I love how BetterHelp is private and it can be done in the convenience of your own home. Nothing worse than sitting in a waiting room. Agreed. And I also love how accessible and affordable BetterHelp is. You can log into your account, send messages to your therapist who gets back to you in a timely manner, and BetterHelp makes it really easy to schedule appointments. Visit BetterHelp.com slash The Hills. That's Better H-E-L-P and join over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. And we have a special offer for The Hills listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash the hills. That's betterhelp.com slash the hills for 10% off your first month. We've all had struggles with our skin. I always seem to battle sunspots, especially in the summer. So I'm so excited that we have partnered with Apostrophe, the sponsor of this episode. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. How it works is so easy. Simply fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and medical history. Then snap a few selfies and a board-certified dermatologist will create your initial customized treatment plan. I absolutely love that I can sit at home, pick out a tailored skincare to my needs from a certified dermatologist with absolutely no appointment necessary. We actually have a special deal for you guys today. You could save $15 off your first visit with an apostrophe provider at apostrophe.com slash hills when you use our code hills. The code is only available to our listeners. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash hills. And use the code HILLS to get your first dermatologist crafted treatment plan for $5. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring this podcast. Question. Do yeah. you still, what was your most recent band? You guys were at like first, this past first season. Oh, which one? Um, yeah. You had a show. It was like. Kind of like um, house music. Or... Oh yeah! Wait a minute, God, not so funny. It's like no, the, the, I forget with, what it was. With, it was with, uh, what's the name with Oz? Oh, Oz. Yeah, Oz. Uh, A H Z. Yeah, A-H-Z. that was, that was <laughs> good too. But it totally that was good. That was like, genre. Genre. Yeah, like yeah. bass, bass music. Yeah, funky pills. Or no, funky pills was not even Oz. That was a different house project that I was doing. Oz was cool though. We had the uh, oh wait, I know we won't listen. That was a good yeah, song. Yeah, that was cool. That actually was a good song. Uh. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, music has always been a big part of my life. Spencer and I used to be best friends, and then we kind of lost touch. He got into documentary filmmaking with his girlfriend at the time, and he went to Brazil, I think it was, and he f- tried to film this documentary with her and blah, blah, blah. He was, he was working really hard to get into that whole industry. And so, when he came back from Brazil, he wanted to show me what he was working on. I said, I would love to see it. I saw it. Then he went, he was like, yo, I, why don't you ever do a reality show? He was like, I would love, you have the craziest life. You're, you know, you're in a band face humper. Like <laughs> you, he's like, you know, at the time we lived in this house, Casablanca, which was just this ridiculous house. Where it was like kind of train to get on. from the, yeah, it was, it was a crazy house. So, and we used to just, Part we used to really live it up. They they, 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 they literally we were young. The best, we were, like yeah, house we threw the parties, best parties. Like, where we everybody were, would go. It was we were wild. legendary. We were wild to say the least. So so Spencer was like, I would love to film your life. Like you know, and at the time I was in Face Humper making 
what, 300 bucks a show, whatever it was, 200 bucks a show. I wasn't killing it by any means, but having fun. And I told Spencer, I said, look, if you show up at my house tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. with a camera in my face, I'll do it. And he was like, done. I swear to God, I'll be there. And sure enough, I swear to God, <laughs> Spencer, I opened my eyes at 8 a.m. and he had headphones on. He had a camera uh-huh. and it, the lens was like in my eyeball, like literally. And he's like, oh wake up. And I, you know, I wake up and I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I'm like, I get it. You're serious. I'll do it. Okay, just stop. I get up. I go to get in the shower. He tries to follow me into the shower. <laughs> okay, you know, I swear to God. And I'm like, hey, hey Pratt, like, stop. And he and I, when I started talking to him, I remember him looking at me going like, shh, stop, I'm not here, I'm not here. Pretend I'm not here, I'm the, it's a reality show. So I just started, <laughs> you know, going about my daily life and and Spencer followed me around and and during all that is when- What a visionary, by the way. Oh, yeah. Pratt, yeah, he was on it from, he, he was on I mean, he was on anything he does, he does like 120%. Yeah, absolutely. And so he followed me around. We would pick up my stepdad at the time yelling at me for parking in this parking spot or being a derelict or, hey, you're in some shitty band. Like, what are you doing? Face humper, you guys suck. Like, he was always constantly <laughs> rousing us of how we were just underachieving. And Spencer would pick up all these moments on camera. And when we would watch the tapes back, we were both like, yo, this is really funny. Like, this whole, you know, dynamic between the stepdad not wanting the stepson to be back home. You know, he was like, I was stoked when you guys went to college. And then my mom was like, no, it's okay. We have this nice, beautiful house. Let them live here. And so like just the whole dynamic, we, we just realized that this is a funny show. So then I went and I bought a camera and Spencer was like the Eddie Haskell friend who was just always around. David couldn't, you know, he would always kind of roust us both. And then we just started, just kept filming. And we did for about a year. We just filmed scenes, scenarios with David you know, and then David saw how passionate and serious we were about doing this, that he would start playing along. So I'd go and hit golf balls at his studio while he was in there with Celine Dion and all these different things. And we'd get it all on camera. And then, you know, I think we filmed about 100, 160 hours of footage with doing all the stuff, Spencer and I. And we just were like, well, what do we do now? That's when we took it to one of David's friends, GRB. We put together a five-minute pilot and sold it to Fox at like 21 years old. Both of us, we sold it to Fox. That was Princes of Malibu. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it. It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. You can check it out. There's six episodes on there. If you could go to Netflix, by the way, here's the link. Um, And you could go to Netflix. It's on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and watch it. Yeah, but it would be cool to go to Netflix. But But it's not on Netflix. It's on YouTube. I'm saying you could go to Netflix and sell it there. Well, for now, it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) The family wasn't together anymore, so... They cancel the show. And then the rest is history. You know, Spencer and I were like, shit, what do we do now? Sean Travis moved over to the hills. And basically, I think you and I were friends at this point, yeah. right? I yeah, remember, how did you hold guys on, I, Hold on, wait a minute. I remember we had met at a diner. I remember this. Well, Jerry's Famous Deli, yep. was it? Jerry's Famous Deli. Yep. Out, after which club was that? That was right next to, it was right next to guys. But we were there because we were at Element. Everybody was at Element that night. It was like a Tuesday night. I remember that. And we all went to Element afterwards. I mean, uh, from Element, we all went to Jerry's Deli and I went with like... This is when you just got into club promoting stuff, right? I had just gotten into like the club promoting... You were from San Diego? You lived in San Diego. So, no, I kind of never lived in San Diego. Just like I I would live there just like in friends' apartments, like like couch surfing type of thing because I would go to school in San Diego. But I'm I'm from Tijuana. I was born in San Diego, but I I was raised and born and everything was in Tijuana. And I would just travel and, and cross the border okay. commute to san diego every day since i was a little kid so it was like a normal it's a normal thing out there yeah. it's like the border culture and um moving to la was just something um that was unexpected i never thought i was going to move to la like my life was like get a girlfriend get married by in my 20s and like have kids and just live the simple life with That's what from, I thought from, too. With, from <laughs> yeah. a, a, a nine to five kind of job and, yeah. and, and figure it out from there. I didn't have that type of like mentality or like vision or aspirations for anything else except that I loved movies. I loved TV shows. I loved acting. I loved that whole world. And um, for some reason, I just one day just got up and it was kind of like, was sad. I had some sad moments in my life out there that like um, I don't really like to speak about. I need therapy for that. Hey, psychologist or psychiatrist, whatever <laughs> you say. Um, 
that no, I just got, I, I you, just yeah you don't want to talk about it nah yeah because it's 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 a little bit more it's deeper maybe it's it's, it's for a different type of like mm-hmm. episode podcast <laughs> podcast episode yeah, yeah. Uh, but I I went through a little something and then I just I had to move and and just start over and be 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 something else you know and and when I moved out here I had an opportunity to work at a nightclub as the office. Um, manager, I guess, office like assistant, and I was, and I started learning a lot about the clubs. How and old met, were you? I was like 22, 23, uh-huh. 22. and I started learning a lot about like the clubs and like who, what promoters meant, because in LA or in Tijuana, they, there was no promoters. Like you have, you own the club, and people go to your club. Like type the Papa's right? and beer. Yeah, we used Papa's to go and there in high and, like, school. And, the, yeah. and and when you heard a promoter, it was more like a flyer mm-hmm. kind of guy that gives flyers and, hey, On here's a, a, a little… Yeah, not like any, the Hollywood. The Hollywood promoter. promoter that like didn't like, even exist really. The Hollywood then. promoter. Yeah, there was only, well, it was only Brent Boldhouse. was like the only… Josh Richmond. Josh Richmond. Hartwell. Brent Boldhouse. Brent Boldhouse. And that was it. And I, I think Tommy last year… And, and, well, Pantera and, Sarah. And, oh, oh, yeah. Pantera and Sarah. Jen, yeah. And then like the, the people that worked for Brent Boldhouse who now ha- have like evolved to becoming great too. But um, it was it was crazy for me because I moved here and I started meeting Brent Bullhouse. He would come to my to my he would he used to run the Saturday night at this club that I worked at Excess, and I would meet him and his and his partner Jen Rosero, and I would meet the other promoters from Thursday nights and stuff like that. So I started having like some sort of friendship there, guys that I still see like the main security from Catch Doc, first guy who let me in the club. I had to hand them a little fucking bill. In the- it was so hard to get in those clubs. Spencer and I, back before, the only way they would let us into these clubs was we had to get fill a limo with 20 girls and just Spencer and I. So we'd be like randomly going up to girls in the street like, hey, you guys want to go to a club? And if we showed up with just Spencer and I with 20 girls, they would let us in. But if it was just us two, no so way. So for me, seeing like when I was walking into this world, right, to seeing like someone like him and Spencer walking in with 20 girls and seeing a limo outside and like, like this is above my pay grade. Like, like who am I? Like, what am I doing here? Like, this is like the, 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 the world's really different from where I was coming from and what I was used to. And like the celebrities and the, the celebrities were like, you were really seeing like Justin Timberlake dance with Britney Spears in the middle of the dance floor. You know, like I, I, it, it was just, Surreal. It was and a different time back then too. It was, it was a way wild. different it was like time. Paparazzi there was no were just yeah. coming around. It was paparazzi like, were outside, but, but the cameras inside didn't exist, right? Yeah, and there was no real like cell phones like we have now or social media. By meeting these people, I started becoming friends with them, and I started realizing like I could, I had the, I had the plug. I was a plug. I realized that I had a like that you hook up. develop these relationships. Now people, yeah, yeah. I, I was Frankie, able to say can, you like, like, hey, I can get you in. I know the person at the front. Like, right. I'll get yeah. you in. I'll get you in. I got and that. I started making friends with girls that I was just meeting at the I mean, why do you think club. I became friends with them? I mean, he was kind of a dick. You know, so. <laughs> Every, <laughs> he got you, er, everyone has Everyone has that story, man. You're not the only one. <laughs> it's kind of funny, man. Uh, he used to but, get me in. I mean, just. So, so yeah. So then I, I, I literally was in, the, in, the, in that nightlife world. And, and somehow or another, like, I just became… Like I, I was good at what I was doing, and it. And it well, and everybody gravitates toward you too. Anywhere you go, like you know everyone. You're always the life of the party. You're so kind, and like people go to you for everything. Yeah. All right. We all know there's a certain confidence that comes with being properly groomed. There's an aura, a vibe. You can just tell by the way they carry themselves. We call this big G E, big groomed energy. And there's only one way to get that B G E, manscaped. We'd like to introduce to you their biggest and best ultimate hygiene bundle yet, the Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped is the leader below the waist grooming. I love the Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0. It comes with all their elite products in a travel bag that I use regularly. I really like their lawnmower trimmer. They feature the proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate parts. And both are waterproof so you can shave with less mess. Yeah, this platinum package is legit. And it also includes their premium body wash and shampoo and conditioner, which is super hydrating and fresh, especially after a morning swim. I also really like their aluminum-free deodorant that has a cologne-like scent to it. The platinum package 4.0 covers all bases from trimming to showering to leaving the gym smelling nice. This is the best bang for your buck. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code HILLS at manscaped.com. 
That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code HILLS. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code HILLS. Unlock your big groom energy with Manscaped. And remember, when you trim the hedges, the tree stands taller. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals, Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your preferences. I love Green Chef. I get three meals a week from them and it fits so well with my busy lifestyle. They offer a variety of choices. You can choose from 24 recipes weekly with the option to mix and match meals from different preferences. So some days I'm feeling the green pea falafel with tahini and other days I just want a light butternut squash salad. Green Chef has so many options to choose from that keeps mealtime interesting without sacrificing taste. I just made the most amazing Greek salad with chicken from Green Chef, and it was absolutely delicious. Fresh artichokes, sun-dried tomatoes, and tzatziki dressing. I could not believe it was keto. Not only is Green Chef keeping things convenient, easy, and healthy, but it's also the most sustainable meal kit. With Green Chef, you're reducing your food waste by at least 25% versus grocery shopping. Go to greenchef.com slash hills135 and use code hills135 to get $135 off across give boxes, plus free shipping on your first box. Again, that's greenchef.com slash hills135 to get $135 off your first box. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. <laughs> All these moochers come at me, and then you're like, <laughs> Frankie's just magnetic. You know, <laughs> hot girls and free drinks. Bro- bro- Brody, Brody looked like a million bucks, but he had 300 bucks in his pocket. So I'm like, <laughs> so he'd be like, Yo, Frankie, what's up? I have 20 girls with me. Any chance I can hang out with you? I'm like, yeah. Sure, man. Sure. I really thought you guys would like me, but I, now I know why. Uh, and uh, uh, we that, love you, that, Frankie. That was, that was the thing, man. That was the thing for me that, the, the, that really made me kind of like, I, I was such a, I always wanted to be. A hospitality, like, like, I wanted to be in it because you could see how fun it is. And mm-hmm. and when you're in it, if you people say right, like, I think there's a saying. I don't know who said it. I think it might be Warren Buffett or someone like that. But I see it all the time in, on Instagram that if if you want, if you never want to work a day in your life, do something you like. Yeah, right. Something you love. So for the first ten years that I did this, it, it I felt like I never worked. I mm-hmm. felt like like it was just so so easy and so it comes so natural that like for some people they really got to sit there and text people and like come to my club and but but when you had the right product mm-hmm. like to to like when you had the right like friends and the right like when they're actually your friends like people just came to support me and I feel that support and I just wrote something on my Instagram the other day that, that's the same thing that I'm like I'm just blessed that I I don't I don't just have a, a friend I don't count my friends with one hand like I really have an army of of friendships and, and family that my friends that became my family, right? Things, people that like really like, I don't know, I I, I feel really loved. And especially on my birthday, I felt it because it was kind of, when you're, when you're struggling to be like, I can't invite this person. Like, I, I have to invite everyone. Everyone yeah. I know has to come and hang out with me. Like, and you, and you, and then you're like, and you see the result. Um, it's 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 really cool to to see where I came from. Not knowing one person in LA, I, I didn't have a single friend. I didn't come here with like a single dollar. Pretty much, I had every yeah, penny I had was like counted for. And you it worked was, so hard. And I know that you've talked about that a lot in the last season that we just filmed of The Hills yeah. about what you've been through and how hard you've worked and all these businesses you've created. And yeah, ramen it's noodles, awesome. ramen noodles, and and uh, tricks are for kids. <laughs> That's all I had in my in my thing. It was either like I was a ramen and morning tricks. I couldn't afford anything else, and it was really cool to like now still have tricks in my. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sneaker like, doodles I, too. Don't forget about the sneaker doodles. I couldn't afford those. They're so expensive, man. <laughs> oh, those peppermint great. sneaker doodles. They're, they're they're really expensive. They're Frankie like love the sneaker doodles. <laughs> man, these motherfuckers would go and and and, and, and yeah, no, my look, sneaker look, doodles. I gotta oh, tell the story. Like Hold on. Oh, wait, no, you have to, my wait, wait, I have one oh quick goodness. story. So when he was living up at Blue Jay Way with Doug, our buddy Doug, they were all living up there. And Frankie used to hide his snickerdoodles, right? And he used to, so Doug and I were hungover one day and we're like sleeping on the couch and we wake up and 
we got we we found his stash of snickerdoodles. So we go in there oh. and we ate we ate. Look at him, look how upset he gets just still to this oh. day. So we ate his snickerdoodles and we filmed us eating his snickerdoodles and we sent it to him. We're like, Frankie, these snickerdoodles are amazing. Oh. You know what he said? He, he's, he's, like, he's like, no, well, guess what? Left, well, guess what? I licked every single one of them. <laughs> <I licked. laughs> so before I left, yeah, I'm like, right. Right. Oh, you it's knew they were going to find I did Dude, he didn't lick. Before yeah, I left, right. I went no, and you... licked all of them and I, I, I think I had a big, oh. Oh in my God. in my in my in my in my sidekick, no, I was like it. taking pictures of it, like because I had a psychic back then. Oh and I was like oh, licking the all of them, putting them back, and I put them there, like and them. I put them right at the front, pretty much, so they could see that I kind of ate it, but I didn't. And then they went and grabbed Love it, and they were like taking pictures, dude. and I'm like, oh well, the jokes on oh, you, so I licked the all of them, and yeah, they, they still like, tasted you. good, even with the lick. Yeah, it was nice. It was him. He didn't lick off the nice seasoning on top of my wife the sugar every day. Yeah, and then we sort of kind of just infiltrated the show, I think. We weren't really casted, yeah. but they wanted It was on. so natural, too, how you guys came on. Like, yeah. it wasn't... Well, well and it was thanks to Frankie. Out. There was a whole plan, by the way, behind it. He's like, Frankie, where are they sitting? I'm like, well, I got you guys. I'm putting the table under you. Um, and you magically are just going to be right next to their table. And it is what it is. And and I, at that point, before the show, right, for uh, episode... When, when they were casting the, the show... These two guys, which I was already friends with Lauren because of Talon. Talon, Talon became my roommate while he graduated high school. He moved to LA and he like, we met in Miami with you. Mm -hmm. You were there for, with me. You guys all, we all like slept in the Yeah, we room. slept in the same room. You guys <laughs> cuddled and I was on my own bed. No, we definitely did not cuddle, Frank. What are you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have Frank. pictures. I have Here pictures to prove it. <laughs> I, I could point right now and uh, say, who was the big spoon? Who was the I, little by, spoon? By the way, by okay. way guys, <laughs> there might be a picture that that's I still important. have. We will put it right here, okay? Was I the big spoon or was I the little spoon? You were the big, uh, the big okay, spoon for right. sure. Okay, good. I'm cool with that. Oh, talent. <laughs> talent, talent, talent will right. submit to, yeah. to oh. he was the baby. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're, okay. we're meet me. Uh, Me in my show with Greg Carney, you you guys know yeah, Greg Carney. Greg, we had our own yeah. show on, on MTV called 24-7. And um, we were supposed to be this like big thing. And it was supposed to be great. And they invited us to the MTV uh, Music Awards in Miami. And it was during Hurricane Katrina. Hurricane Katrina had just passed through there. And I was there yep. when it was passing through. Where like the whole city that. was destroyed pretty much. And... Um, and they were thinking about canceling the MTV Awards, but then it, it actually passed by and everything was fine. And then it really hit um, New Orleans. And uh, Brody was there and I was there and we were all there. And um, when we went to the awards, I was actually hosting a party uh, at Privé, which it, it was one of the most legendary places that Dave Grutman used to run. He like he invited me to like kind of um, be a host there. For that night and I, I was bringing all my friends and then Talon overheard me talking to like Greg and who, who we were going to take and stuff like that and he he was like yo you guys are going out and I'm like well yeah man it's like can, can I come and he like <laughs> he kind of somehow came through and then Brody came through and we all kind of like became boys that night mm -hmm. and then he immediately was like yo I want to move to LA like I don't know what to do. I mean, we had a really cool bachelor house and we had an extra room so we moved Talon in and Talon was bringing Lauren and the whole cast to okay, so the that's house. How you met and that's how I met and them. So I was already really good friends with them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how he, that kind of led to like Kristen going out and bumping into him because Talon's oh, right. Was, to bring yeah. Oh, is that how you met Kristen? Yeah, at Element. At so yeah, party one of because you like, and Kristen at an event. I remember I met her. Yeah, and then it was who was Spen Spencer's with Heidi, and that's when you guys would all hang out at one point, right? I like yeah, I think Kristen and I met before. Before, okay. before. yeah, Kristen this and I met before. before. They were like, started hanging out with Heidi, okay. and then before the show, before yeah, because we show, weren't even doing the yeah, show at all. Yeah, the show was, was not when I was yet. with Kristen. That was oh. when I we finished Princess of Malibu. So so Talon would bring them, and they would all kind of like sleep over. Jason Waller and, and Lauren would like they. It was like a whole thing. Like they would just come to the house, and um. So yeah, so so I knew them all. So they were like, "You're the perfect fit to be on the show on season one." Because the guys that would hang out with me and they were always at the house too was Brian and Jordan, Talon, Jordan and me. Yeah, that was our crew, and and Brian and Jordan were really like into like I, we want to be actors and I think this will like make us act actors and people will know our faces and it'll be easier to get gigs, and um, so so when they were casting it, I still had that thing with with the show. I was still on 
I wanted to be on it because it looked so fun to be with my friends, but I couldn't I couldn't be on the show because of the other show. Yeah. The other show gets canceled. And then I'm like kind of stuck in the middle of like the show's already going. So when that show was already going, like, you just you know, you didn't the hills hadn't proven itself. You it was MTV, right? Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. So why would it be a problem if you were on a net on no, another because show? Because I, I was the... like, I was thinking my show was gonna be was gonna be a big like hit, a and hate. the hills wasn't gonna. That's and what then happens. The and then came. all of a sudden, the hills blew up, and then Frankie was like, uh, "Just saying, I'm the down. biggest episode ever. The biggest episode <laughs> That's ever how it was happens. My birthday on the hills, biggest ratings. Yeah, very That's true. How that went down. Microphone down, man. Wait, by the way, did you guys know that <laughs> we will get to that episode? At some Wait, point. but Monday was the 16 year anniversary of the. I did the see hills. that. I did see That's that. Wow. crazy. Yeah. It was 16 years that. ago. So we're starting yeah, it on the 16th anniversary. So. Yeah. Congrats Perfect. to you. Congrats. And the Hills would have been yeah, nothing you without you, Frankie, too. okay? Let me just 100%. clarify that. The Hills... they, should, they, they would have been shooting at these shitty clubs. That's this is true. This is very true. <laughs> well, and you kept the party going and like, you always were the peacemaker. <laughs> and, and then Jared, didn't you, didn't, didn't, didn't our, our, our producer of the show who got us into the show, he actually did a night there, I think. He was like the Saturday night the Thursday night. Oh, he was a promoter too. Yeah. Well, he was so... the doorman. He was the, he was Pretty Boy Promotions. Oh, Because no he thought way. it was pretty. Oh, oh. <laughs> he is pretty. He is pretty. <laughs> he is a pretty boy. He's he got is. those beautiful Mickey blue eyes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then, so then, the, so then we were like in, we we're in Miami. We all meet. So okay. They start going out. We're all going out to the clubs and stuff like that. And I was supposed to be on the show, but I just couldn't. I couldn't. I, it was Brian and Jordan, and they kind of like, weirdly enough, they kind of like. Pushed me a little bit to the side when they were shooting, and they were right. like, "They're like, this is our thing. They you got have your thing. You have twenty four for me." You know, in, in, yeah. in a very split second. So, in the first episode, I remember from watching a little bit of it, like they were a huge, like especially Jordan, Heidi, Jason, and Lauren. Like they lived together in the apartment. Do you remember that? Did they Did live you ever, together? They all lived together, or they spent together. a lot of time, or something. Or Jordan, like... I mean, Jason and Lauren lived there, right? Or no, Heidi and Lauren did, and then they were always there, though. Like, yeah, I think they lived the in the same unit, in the same. Like, and Brian was always like the single guy. By the way, till this day, he's still single. In the villas. <laughs> um, and the villas. <laughs> they were in the villas. I would have lived to the villas. I would have lived to the palazzo, guys. Yeah, yeah, still yeah, nice. Exactly. <laughs> the palazzo had a the villas. security guard outside to come in. Yeah, so Heidi then set me up on a date with Brian, which he was really funny. How did that go? I mean, it didn't go anywhere. Brian. <laughs> but he was a funny guy. It was that's nice. Yeah. That's not your type. Not my type. Right. The, from, from but the I day tried. Day. I mean, it would have been fun if all three of us friends that like, had great. the same group of yeah. Maybe boyfriends. Brian would have still been on the show. Justin, Bobby, Brian. So we have, a, we Bobby, have an inside yeah, joke. Yeah, I was already with Justin. Yeah. They, 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 <laughs> you were already, they, I was with Justin you were before the in. show. So, so it's like Brian, Justin, Bobby, Brody. No, no <laughs> Justin, I was with like no, maybe. since I was eighteen or nineteen. Oh like my I, God, yeah, this I was, guy. we'll get into that too. But like before, the but show? on the show, yeah, on the show, I was with went on a date with Brian. Um, first, so 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 then the yeah, so Brian and Jordan, like by the way, there's a, there's a joke about this between us because they do these movies now, and I've been like they'll call me like yo, can you be part of it? I'm like only if I can like say my 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 little line with you guys. It's like okay, fine. So they do these movies where like they play Brian and Jordan. And I play Frankie, but it's they're doing. Who does these movies? Brian. Brian. Brian's like a. He, oh, he's actually really talented. He, he did a lot producer of comedy or what? too. Huh? A producer or like he, a... no? He directs it, produces it, oh, like cool. does everything. He he shot the movie with his iPhone, and it actually oh. came out really good for the budget he had. He had like I think ten thousand bucks, twelve thousand bucks to do it, and um and in the sh- and the thing he goes every time I see him I go hey what's up season ones. Season ones. <laughs> because I mean, they, only they were only one season. They only and, make it to one and then season. they look at me. I'm like, yep. Yeah. So four, four against one, guys. It is what it is. And season one. <laughs> Frank. No, it was five. No, but there was they were six. at that. They point, were only on season, season one. No, I know, but weren't there six? There was six. There was six. But seasons. I started in third in the third season. Oh, you did. Uh, oh, you started in third. You weren't on the second at all. I, wow. Yeah, but I wasn't like part of the cast right, 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 right. at all. Yeah. And, but we um, still hung out with you like, uh, all the time. As soon as you, Lauren you, and I, the uh, Frankie was our. They were like Frankie, shooting and, all, and then tonight? they would go hang out with me at my table while there was like some order, uh, some some other stuff being shot. Yeah. And you guys would come to my table and We'd hang out. We'd run back me. and forth. Yeah, because everybody want to hang out with Frank. Does anybody still talk to Lauren? 
No. Does, does anybody? My like, wife. Yeah, do you, do my you still wife, talk to Lauren? Like, I, really, I haven't seen her in so long. I haven't seen her. In, Jen, Jen still hangs know. out with her a lot, and um, or not hang out because they're, they're also live in the OC now. They live in Laguna, right? And it's hard to see her, but I think she goes to all her events and stuff like that. And you know, I I used to get the happy birthday text, and now I don't. Weird. <laughs> Oh, well, the 16th anniversary was on my birthday. So it's all coincidence. Right? So the, it's the all happening. Right. On your, literally on your birthday. On the 16th. Yeah. That is kind of crazy. I saw Lauren two years ago at the Disney on Ice. And I met her little boy. And we talked How many kids does she have now? She has two, two. now. Wow. They're so cute, by the way. Yeah. That's cool. She, she, she did it right. She got in. She got, she got in. She got in. Perfect guy. Yeah. She's a, Set up the clothing thing. And then just, and Let's go. Yeah. Yep. Businesswoman. Yeah. So then, um, good for her. Yeah. So then, that I guess that's why I wasn't part of the beginning, but now we are here, and we are here at this podcast, where I will make sure you guys give me all the little secrets. I think you have well, plenty of your own little secrets. Brady. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was on the outside, guys. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was yeah. just making sure you guys were good. Yeah, Always. that was, that was like a lifetime ago. So, I think it's time. That in every episode, we're going to take some fan calls. Okay. And um, so because this is the first episode, this will be probably our most legendary question we'll ever get. Was it real or fake? Hey, my name is Michelle. And my question is for Brody. Are you and Spencer really friends? Um, do you still speak to him? And um, lastly, why do you think there is so much backlash from him and Heidi about being on the hills? Thanks. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, Spencer and I went through about, I don't know, pretty long time, like not talking, like six years. I know that when I was sort of hanging out with Lauren still, he had that little fallout with Lauren and, and so did Heidi and that whole thing. And because I stayed friends with Lauren, it sort of caused some some conflict between us. So we didn't talk for a long time. Since then, we have completely rekindled our relationship, our friendship. Absolutely. He's a good friend of mine. As far as the backlash, I mean, I didn't really think, I think Spencer and Heidi were such a pivotal part of the show. I think that they were like, uh, absolutely. I mean, that's, I think they made the show. The fact that, you know, you had Lauren and her whole crew doing their thing and then Spencer and Heidi, I mean, every time they popped on the screen, it was just like, what's going to be said? They just, they added so much value to the show. Um, so there wasn't that, I mean, controversy, all that stuff's good for reality television. So they were, Without them, I don't even think the show would have had the success that it had. Um, but yeah, I love Spencer, love Heidi. We've all grown up. And I guess now they're expecting a, a new child. We just and we just all saw this. Congratulations. Yeah. On Us Weekly today. So they're on their second kid. That's they're a, in true a great blessing. they're in a great place. So yeah, everything's no. everything's good. Heidi's wanted a baby for another baby for so long. And that I was know. this last season, like was really hard for her because Everyone else was either getting pregnant or already had babies, and she had Gunner, but she really wanted a second. So, yeah. this is amazing news. Very happy for them, and you know they're great. Everything, everything's all good now. Thank you, Michelle. Hi, were episode storylines discussed in advance or right before you filmed the scenes at all? In Go the ahead. beginning, no, we didn't know what we were getting into. Really, we would just know where we had to be and what time, and then you show up and just. See what happens. And then as the show went on, it kind of, you know, eventually there were storylines, but you still kind of natural, real things did happen. But in the beginning, it was very just get in front of the cameras and let's see what happens. And we filmed for like a year before they even aired the show to kind of see our dynamics and how we all got along and who had chemistry and like what would make sense. Yeah. Who was, uh. who was, what? Go ahead. Frankie. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh. So when you guys hung out, it was pre-planned. No, huh? no. no. It's, it's, it's a big is... production too, yeah. you know? I mean, when they show up to film, they got to have something to film. So you can't just sit there and be like, uh, you know, the whatever. And there's all, there's other cast members. Yeah, they got to kind of fill you in on what other people are doing on the show and kind of how you feel about that and kind of give you the outline of what's going on in yeah. the show before you get in there. But a lot of improv. Yeah, lots of improv, lots yeah. of opinions and addressing con like confrontation and 
even though I remember so many times I did, I hated confrontation, but they, it's like, they just pressure you to be like this. If you want a good TV show, you have to go and bring it up to her and see what happens. So, um, there was a lot of that. Oh yeah. yeah. They wanted the drama. Just here, go drink. <laughs> you guys here, open bar tab, go ahead, have some fun and then, and then spring the drama on you. Yeah. I mean, there was one time we were at Ledoux and we were all sitting there as girls and someone threw a cup at the back of Lauren's head. And me and Heidi got up and chased the girl down and grabbed her. And I think it was uh, someone we knew. It was one of Doug's exes. That oh, they knew Allie. from Allie. Oh my God. From Laguna Dude. Beach. Oh my goodness. Yes. Remember Allie? Give me the ring. Remember the ring? <laughs> 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 Allie. Yeah, me Bless and Heidi her. had Bless her, her back for sure. Um, the but... ring. The ring. You know, <laughs> never mind. Inside joke. Allie um, was on the show too later. She so was. Like, she, get popped, into that. she popped on for a little bit. Which we'll, Kristen we'll get did, into the whole ring story. Yeah, and Kristen <laughs> did not like that. She was nah, on the show either. Kristen wasn't, she wasn't too stoked. No, but um, yeah, there was a lot of random things that just happened while filming. So you never really know what was going to happen. You just kind of went with it and just made a good show. All this right. has been fun, guys. It has. Been. Is this, are we already at the end of our first? It, we are. But, first we, but you know, the things don't end like this with me. Things end with a shot. Always, we have to take oh, a dear. shot. Oh, Celebrating. I gotta go drive. There we bro. go. <laughs> what do you mean, bro? I got you a driver, bro. Relax. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> this guy. Stop. A shot no, at. Let's, uh, let's, let's it's, be, it's noon. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, every time I'm with you guys oh, on the show, God. there's always shots. Well, we have to keep the tradition going, or else it's not the hills. <laughs> so we're gonna okay. take a couple of shots. I'm gonna ask a couple of questions, and if you don't want to, if you don't want to answer it, you can take a shot. And if you answer it, you take a shot. <laughs> Wait, so okay, if you so you take a shot, regardless. you take a shot regardless. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, all right. That's how okay. it works. That's the game. Shot of water or shot of mamitas or does Frankie, does Frankie look like up? he drinks shots of water? <laughs> does Brody look? You think that's water? <laughs> yeah. You think that's Just water? Straight blanco. He was like, "Oh, there's cameras. Oh no, no, give me, give me a water bottle instead." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we know oh we know the we, we know that little trick. Oh my god! All right, you what's in the red cup? Huh? Yeah, what's in your red uh, cup over there? Exactly. <laughs> this should also be a birthday mm, shot for great. you, Frankie. Actually, yes. Since why not? we weren't with you on your birthday. Happy birthday to myself. Happy birthday to you. Happy future birthday to you. Oh yeah, Thank yours you. is shout, coming up, bro. Shout out it's to, a big it one. Is. We don't sell. I don't celebrate birthdays anymore. It's well, like, this year what, you what's have the point to. of it? It's, no, it's only. Don't you turn forty this nope, year? No, no. First off, shut your mouth, okay? <laughs> no, Frankie, Frankie that would be my next party. birthday. After we're throwing this you a party. Now this, I'm still. This is thirty nine, the big three nine. But damn, uh, you're old, man. That's why we don't celebrate birthdays anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> what I like to do now is every just, year's. Uh, a, I'm go going to dinner, backwards. So relax. It is what it is, right? Yeah. No. Um, Embrace no, it. But let's 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 cheers to. Come on, man. What are we? Are we? We're gonna cheers. I bet you're gonna ask a question or something. We're gonna from first. We're gonna cheers to. Was it real? Okay. Okay. Was it real? The Hills Rewatch. I know we're here doing it. Congrats. Wow. We're actually Finally doing we're it. Here. Cheers. Cheers, so one. Guys. Cheers, everybody. And two, the question for you guys, obviously. Is it for or both not, of us or one? It's yeah. for both of you. You guys can answer at the same time together. You guys can like make each other's face, maybe one. But did y'all hook up? You're gonna go there right now. <laughs> right <laughs> at oh my god. Cheers. Thank you for watching, Cheers. guys. Oh my god. Here's the Hills Rewatch. <laughs> Was it real? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Follow, rate, and review The Hills Rewatch wherever you guys listen to your podcasts. If you like to watch us, check us out on YouTube. See you guys later. Later. Yeah. <laughs>